Hello YouTube, today we're doing some linear algebra. Specifically, we're going to be finding an orthogonal basis uh, spanned by a set of vectors. And at the end, we're going to take a look at how to find the orthonormal basis. Um, this is going to be an example video, not too much on concept, but I'll kind of touch on it as we go through. So here's a typical problem you might come across. So you want to find the orthogonal basis, and we have two vectors here uh, spanned by that set of vectors. Um, so, but first, the way you're going to want to approach this is something called the Gram-Schmidt method. And the Gram-Schmidt method is basically when you have two vectors pointing in um, some direction um, that are perpendicular, you can make them perpendicular by using their components. Um, so the process, I'm just going to kind of go out here um, and say a little bit more. So um, a vector has um, its components, right? If you take if you take the projections of those components, which acts like the shadow of the vector on the coordinate system, um, you can find the combination that um, can make the vectors um, orthogonal, um, so or perpendicular. So this is kind of the method in doing so. You subtract the components off. So you take um, the projection of V1, which is we're defining as the first vector, X1 here, um, and you subtract it off. And the way you do that is by doing the dot product. And another way of writing the dot product um, is simply doing the transpose, because the, that's what's great about linear algebra, the transpose of a matrix um, times or it acts as the dot product. So we're taking the uh, vector we want to project it on, like that shadow, um, and we're going to find the um, perpendicular portion. So, And that's if you have two vectors. Now what if you have three? You would take the third vector. Um, you would subtract the projection of the third vector from the first vector, and then also from the second vector as well, um, and then you would get that as well. Again, dot products here, and then we can rewrite those as transposes. Um, so come familiar with the Gram-Schmidt method in terms of the formula. Um, this is one formula of doing it. There is an, a few other different ways of writing it, um, but definitely look online and see um, more of the concept, but we're just going to go over the examples now. So first thing you want to do when you solve this problem is define V1 as X1 by using the Gram-Schmidt method. Um, next, we're going to want to solve for V2, which, uh, to make the mathematics easier, we're just going to write it in this form in the transpose because it's easier to calculate. So we write X2, which is our V1, excuse me. Um, we write our X2 first, subtract the transpose of that. So all you do is um, make all the, or make the column into a row. Um, so we do that, and then we multiply that by V1, which we define as X1, so we just write X1 there. Then we do V1 transpose, which is just the transpose of X1, and multiply that by uh, V1, which is X1, and all that times V1 again. Um, then you're going to do some math here. So just some simple uh, matrix multiplication. So you should get 15 over 30, but that would be 4, let's see. Do, 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 do. It'll be 8, so 4 times 2 is 8, um, negative 1 times negative 5 is 5, plus 2 would give you 15, and then we get that over 30. Um, that's a scalar there. Multiply it by the vector, so we can say 15 over 30 is 1 half, um, so we'd rewrite that, make sure, and distribute the 1 half um, as such. So then all you do is subtract the two vectors. Uh, pretty simple, 4 minus 1, so on and so forth. So you should get 3, 3 halves, th and 3 halves again. Now that's our V2. So the orthogonal basis is simply the span of those two vectors, because now these are the two perpendicular portions, and you can test that as well um, by taking the dot product. Um, so now you just write it to some arbitrary uh, orthogonal basis, W, is the span of those two vectors, so V1 and V2. And that's how you find the orthogonal basis. Now, if you want to find the orthonormal basis, all you got to do um, is take that span of vectors and divide um, by its magnitude to make it a unit vector. Um, so this is V1. Remember, this is V2. Um, so we just take the square root, or the square of each component, and then square, sum them all up and square root them. So 2 squared, uh, negative 5 squared, 1 squared. And we should get radical 30. Do the same thing for V2. Uh, you square all the components, and then you should get radical 6 here, and all you do is divide by each divide each um, part by the unit vector. So another, just to make life simpler for now, um, we can actually rewrite that V2 as 2, 1, 1 um, to make the division a little easier. 
here because uh, if you divide that whole ma that whole uh, vector by three, each component by three, um, you get two one one. So uh, here's the orthonormal basis. Here it comes. Uh, so we'll just call it b um, equals the span of two divided by radical thirty, negative five divided by radical thirty, and one divided by radical thirty. Remember, just dividing each component by its uh, magnitude, and then we do the same thing for the other side. That's why I made a little note over there. Um, so that's how you find the orthonormal basis. Um, this is a good example um, to be used. And um, by the way, it's the mental or a note here. Uh, for if you had a fourth vector, you would also subtract the projection of v3 on x4. Um, so this could keep going on forever and ever, but generally uh, these problems take a, quite a long time, especially when you get to v3. Um, so just thought I'd uh, give that a quick note. So here's the examples. Good luck and happy studying.